I'm going to talk to you today about policy making in the Commonwealth Public Service and the importance of knowledge exchange. So the key things I'm going to focus on in my presentation are the role of the Commonwealth Public Service, the policy development environment in which public servants work, key issues public servants need to address when providing advice to government, some of the key differences between academics and public servants, and the importance of knowledge exchange as part of the policy process. So what I'm going to tell you about today is based on my experience in the Commonwealth Department of Health and my experience in several other Commonwealth departments, including the Department of Prime Minister and Cabinet. So, as a Commonwealth public servant, I can primarily only talk to you about how things work at the Commonwealth level. But it's important to keep in mind that in Australia, the Commonwealth is not solely responsible for the development and implementation of health policy, funding or service delivery. And as the pie sh um, chart shows, the states and territories and private providers also play a role. Under Australia's Federation, the Commonwealth plays a strong role in national policy making, but generally funds rather than provides health services. Its key roles are in funding and administering Medicare and the Pharmaceutical Benefits Scheme, and in funding public hospitals and population health programs, which it does along with the states and territories. The states and territories, on the other hand, play a strong role in administering public hospitals and regulating hospitals and community-based health services. At the Commonwealth level, under the Australian system of representative democracy, I'm sure everyone knows this, it's the Prime Minister and the Cabinet that are the pre-eminent uh, decision makers. So what's the role of the uh, Commonwealth Public Service? Public servants serve the government of the day, recognising its policy parameters and philosophical leanings. And they have to work under a range of values and ethics and must adhere to a code of conduct at all times. One of the key APS values which Commonwealth public servants must embrace is that they must be impartial and apolitical in all of their work. They are also expected to be professional, objective and efficient and to achieve the best results for the Australian community and the government of the day. Commonwealth public servants also need to maintain appropriate levels of confidentiality when developing policies which often needs, means that they have to apply what's called the need to know principle with regard to talking to people outside their immediate area about what they're working on. So that can make open communication with researchers quite difficult in that situation. And I know people find that quite frustrating. But in thinking about that, it's important to understand that public servants can actually face um, significant penalties, including jail time, if we inappropriately breach confidentiality. Okay, so the policy development environment. In developing policy, public servants face a number of constraints, as well as the fact that advice has to be in line with the policy parameters and preferences of the government of the day. Policy also has to be developed within the confines imposed by budgetary constraints and tight deadlines. Uh, as Mark Booth explained yesterday, in some cases, policy refer, uh, reform occurs over a reasonably long period of time, includes stakeholder consultation, and incorporates the consideration of a wide range of available evidence. But that's not always the case. What is also common is that policy advice is needed much more quickly, which means that public servants are often working under a lot of pressure. While evidence-based policy is obviously what public servants, or at least good public servants, always strive for, it can be very hard to look at the relevant research findings when you're working to very tight deadlines. And that's why ongoing knowledge exchange and knowledge translation between researchers, academics and policy officers is a really important part of the policy development process. Of course, in saying this, it's also really important to recognise that what finally becomes policy will usually be the result of a number of factors, not just the relevant research. So research is only one of those factors. So policy advice to government. Because ministers and their advisers are really busy people, public servants need to be succinct and relevant in the advice that they provide to government. In fact, in providing advice to government, we really need to focus on only the most critical information that the government needs to make a decision. As a, role, as a rule, the key issues public servants need to address in their advice are, what is the problem, 
What is the background? What are the possible solutions, including implementation details? What are the risks and sensitivities, uh, including if there are academics which have really opposing views, that would be a risk uh, or at least a sensitivity. What is the likely cost likely to be, factoring in any potential offsets, and also what is the preferred way forward and why. I worked in the Department of Prime Minister and Cabinet when I first started in uh, the public service and under Prime Minister John Howard, no matter how compl complicated the issue was, we had to do the entire brief in one page. And that was extremely difficult and we would spend lots of time trying to make the spaces a bit smaller and the margins a bit smaller. Uh, and eventually he did send a note back and said, I really like a bit of white space, so if you need to go over a tiny bit, it's okay. <laughs> but most agencies do allow a little bit more than one page for their briefing, uh, but it's unlikely that anything will go that's more than you know, two or three pages. As I've already mentioned, knowledge exchange is a knowledge translation between researchers and academics and policy officers is a really important part of the policy development process. Ongoing knowledge exchange between policy officers in the public service and researchers and academics working on health-related areas can greatly assist in informing evidence-based policy. Exposing public servants to research, which is presented in a way which is succinct, topical and easy to understand, is particularly valuable. However, successful knowledge exchange between policy officers and researchers and academics takes a bit of effort because both parties are quite different and there are core differences um, in a whole range of areas including the way they think, the way they operate and even their values. But fortunately, the World Health Organisation has articulated what some of the core differences are. And this table is really uh, useful, I think. Um, if you do a web search, you should be able to find it. So um, it's just World Health Organisation uh, differences between government offices and uh, government officials. And as you can see there, there's differences in all those areas. So it's really worth taking the time to have a look at that one. So just in conclusion, for researchers and academics wanting to have an impact on policy thinking and policy development through knowledge exchange, preparing a very succinct summary of your research and research findings can be a great place to start. That might take a bit of practice, but it's worth doing. In interacting with policy officers in the public service, it's important to try to think like a public servant, at least temporarily and to address the range of issues that they need to address when providing advice to government and developing policy. So just really quickly to go through that again, any succinct summary that you do of your research should ideally try to have the background, maybe a sentence or two, possible solutions and implementation details, risks and sensitivities, costs including any offsets, and that doesn't mean a detailed costing, it just means it's going to cost a lot, it's not going to cost a lot, uh, there are constitutional constraints, it's kind of looking at that big picture and, and how this fits within it. And then your preferred option and also an explanation of why. And one word before I go, public servants really don't want to read 20 pages about your methodology, not because we're not interested, but it's just not really all that relevant to us. So just um, a sentence or two, just so that we know that, you're, um, that your research is robust and that when we go to Senate estimates, we're not going to get questions which are embarrassing. Mm -hmm.